Hello everybody, I hope you are having a fantastic day. I've got a little bit of work ahead of me. I've got some boards to solder and I thought it'd be interesting if I took the same exact board and I soldered it five times with five different kinds of solder. So I want to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. They are awesome. And one of the things we don't talk about enough is that they have this awesome section of their website called Shared Projects. And a guy named C64 Istanbul made this one and shared it. And I was able to buy it and uh, make it. And you'll see a video about it one day. Um, and so one of the cool things, you go on there, you find a project that seems interesting, you click a button, it's five bucks for the PCBs. And uh, depending on what shipment method you use, about seven to $15 shipping. Uh, I like to order a bunch at once so I can combine that shipping and get these boards really, really cheap. So thank you PCBWay for helping me keep all these computers going. All right, so here are the contenders. And you can see I've written on the board, we have uh, this, I ripped the label, but this is Kester, uh, brand new from Amazon, manufactured a couple of months ago. Uh, this is 6337. This is your standard go-to um, quality solder that you would find, and we're gonna put it on this board. And then uh, we've got the same thing in an antique here. Now the gauge is a little bit thicker. It's a uh, 0.032 instead of 0 0.025. Um, but this is one of those things just to see if it being old has a major effect on it. This stuff does have an expiration date and we're well past it, but we're gonna see what that is like, at least from a subjective perspective. Uh, the next one we have here is Kester Lead Free. And this is some uh, Kester um, Lead Free solder here alloy what does that say alloy 95.5 and uh so we'll be checking that out this stuff is pretty thick so it might be a little chunky to for application uh this is some rosin core solder another 6337 but this is some old school radio shack stuff and then finally we have the uz husky um and this is 6337 and this is the type that typically comes with solder kits so if you get a soldering kit on amazon or aliexpress um this is what you're going to get obviously all the pcbs are the same the iron's the same i'm going to keep the temperature the same and what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to clean the iron in between each one of these things and we're we're gonna go ahead and just use some tip refresher to um, really clean that iron and give it a nice clean coating uh, so that we don't have any kind of cross-contamination causing us any issues. Now, again, we're not gonna be crazy scientific, but let's just see what happens. All right, here we go with the new Kester. Note that the side that has the black connector on it is the side with the um, flux. So we're gonna see, we get good flow, not a whole lot of sizzle uh just kind of what you would expect let's just go down here it's got a really smooth feel you know when i push it on there I, I, everything just feels good it feels like it flows well uh, i'm going to go ahead and do the other side a little bit we'll start up high on the pin and just see everything seems pretty good there's a decent amount of flux running off this thing even on the pins that didn't have any flux added to it you can see that we're getting a decent little flux trail kind of flowing down the board as it rolls downhill all right i'm going to finish this one up okay so taking a look at this obviously i'm not a solder master but um the solder felt like it flowed pretty well felt like it went down into the joint really well i didn't have to fight with it or anything like that um i could have dwelled just a little bit longer on some of those joints but in general um it felt really good felt like i wasn't fighting or anything just kind of what you'd expect from a quality solder so let's see if having solder that is older makes any difference okay so let's try the old stuff i'm going to try not to judge it too much for it being thicker um it might take just a little longer to melt all right so it does melt well uh, i'm not seeing a major difference in terms of flow or anything i'll say i'm getting it looks like i'm getting maybe just a tiny bit more bubbling uh the smell of it smells older <laughs> it smells like grandpa's workshop instead of uh and again i usually use an extractor so i don't usually smell it very much but you can tell there's definitely a more rosiny smell to it, it smells like an old uh electronic shop and i would think it looks like i'm getting just a lot more rosin on the board itself we'll be able to compare those side by side um it doesn't look like and i know i'm using thicker solder but i also once it's melted it doesn't quite look like it's pulling down in the board as much as the newer stuff. The newer stuff, you can almost see it kind of suck down in the hole. Um, and I mean, this is doing that. It's just, just subjectively just very, it's like even melted, it's just a little bit thicker and not quite going down quite as far. 
So comparing these two, there's definitely, uh, I'm not sure how much you can see. Yeah, I guess you can definitely see. There's a lot more um, flux all over the board from the one on the right. I mean, they both have a lot, but there's definitely more flux in this old one. Um, overall, though, the experience wasn't too bad. <laughs> and the smell brought me back to my childhood. Uh, I'm sure that smell took a lot of brain cells away, as you guys can tell. All right, lead free. Now, you don't realize it until, until you just use the other two, just how thick uh, THICC this um, lead free solder is. It's a little ridiculous. Uh, it does still have a lot of smoke to it. Um, it melts fine. It bubble. Oh, it stinks. It stinks bad. Um, so it's a lot goopier, you can see here. And I don't think it's just the quantity of the solder. Uh, it is just plain goopier in general, and so as I'm soldering, I'm, I'm, it's coating the iron with like a thick, um, gelatinous uh, solder blob that actually stands off it, and it has a lot of flux. You can see where the stuff on the first row that I'm doing here is running down past the second row. Um, I don't think it's just the thickness of the gauge. I think it's actually like a thicker... When it's melted, it's just a thicker product without the uh, lead in it. So we're going to let this one go. And you can see even there, it, does, it, it wants to sit on top of the solder joint instead of soaking in. And we're, I mean, we're at a blazing hot 420 Celsius. So um, it's not temperature on the iron causing that. So and you can see we're getting little peaks on top of these things. So uh, not the best experience now. Lead-free solder is harder to work with in general, and so most people would recommend for repairs just go ahead and getting, yeah, you can see that's just like floating on top of that. Um, in fact, I'm probably not even going to finish soldering the board with this thing. Uh, eh, I'll go for it just for the heck of it. I could crank up the iron, but I don't think I'm going to. Um, as you can see there, we're getting a lot of uh, chunks of solder on top of it. It's just too thick. It's not not the right product for this application and it's old so there's that as i'm using this a little bit more it does seem like if you can keep your iron clean and i'm sure some of this is just the temperature and just really try to get just as little on there as possible it does get a little bit more workable um still feel like it's sitting on top a little bit you have to leave it on there to dwell a little longer to get it to come in but if you can just you know and again this is crazy thick but if you can get just the slightest amount on your iron um but there's no doubt it's trickier to work with like you can feel it it's it's almost like it's got a skin it doesn't want to melt until it melts uh it just it, you really kind of have to fight with it a little bit more and um once you get it melted it doesn't necessarily want to flow in unless you really just keep it hot <laughs> i mean look at this club here it's like a golf ball sitting on top of the thing. Uh, yeah, that's pretty dang bad. Um, I mean, not going to lie. Same iron, same flux, same everything. And it's just, just not the same experience. All right, let's try some of the stuff that comes in a kit. This is a newer uh, spool of this stuff, 6337. So we tested some old and new Kester 6337. Let's try some non-Kester and see what we got. We do have a clean iron here. Um, okay, so... I think we're definitely getting more smoke um, and it's rancid smoke. It, it smells like old, really old electronics, even though it's new solder. Uh, I would say we're not quite getting the flow that we were getting with the Kester. Um, and the flux appears to be just a little bit darker sitting on top. Everything just appears to be darker. Um, I don't hate this stuff as much as I thought I would. But I can see that as I'm doing it, it's still sitting on top just a little bit. I'm not flowing down in there, even though I'm good on temperature. It just is not flowing as well. I don't know how to explain it. Um, the overall product might be fine, but it just doesn't seem... And again, I, I know I could be clouding my judgment because I spent a fair amount. I think the Kester is like 40-some bucks, but... For one thing, the smell is just absolutely rancid. I don't have a choice. I had to turn on the fume extractor if I'm going to finish this one. All right, let's take a look at both of them up close. Um, I would say in the end, I mean, that's not my best work ever, but I would say in the end, that one's a little bit neater. You know, it's got a decent amount of flux on it. This one here is um, doesn't actually look all that different. I would say that looking at it up close while I was soldering, I could see the flux and flowing out a lot more on this one, but I saw the solder flowing down a lot more 
on the Kester. So it looks to me like the, the you know, it might have penetrated a little bit more. All right, let's try the Radio Shack. Um, now, back in the day, you know, I would solder with a 100-watt gun, um, you know, and soldering a lot thicker wires and stuff like that, working on cars. And, I mean, that was just what you did back in the day. Um, so, you know, this stuff is, that's why some of these solders are so thick. Um, I would say that this one definitely has less of that goopiness factor that the Kester Lead Free does. You could tell, I mean, it's sitting on top a lot more than, uh, than the thinner other solders, the newer solders. They were penetrating more where this is sitting on top, making a little cone almost. Um, that said, the smell is not anywhere near as raunchy as the newer stuff from the soldering kit and um it flows you know flows okay the flux seems reasonable like everything seems reasonable about it i'm a little concerned though about the penetration of this old radio shack solder there you go i would say that's pretty middle of the road um relatively easy to use you know we'll check out the penetration but overall uh not great not terrible all right, so as much as it's nice to have little pretty peaks on this side, um, what probably matters is how much that solder penetrated. So we're gonna take a quick look at these things. And as you can see um, on this one, the new Kester uh, penetrated really well. You can see that it's uh, there's almost domes on the other side where it's gone all the way through the joint and it has reached up and grabbed the pin itself. Uh, let's take a look at the old Kester. And uh, for the most part, we have the same thing. We don't have too many you know valleys or anything like that everything looks like it went through everything looks like it grabbed you can even see just a tiny bit of flux made it all the way through um, over on this side here so that's very cool uh, let's take a look at the Kester lead free yeah, as you can see there we don't have as good a penetration some of the flux made it through it dirty that one that you're seeing in the middle of the screen but um, there are definitely valleys in there where that uh, stuff did not make it all the way through and did not grab the pin uh, the same way from the back as the other ones did. Let's take a look at the older Radio Shack here and uh, yeah same thing there's there's some decent little uh, valleys in there where the stuff sat on top more than penetrated through. Now this one over here it went all the way through and grabbed up the pin but th these over here didn't um, and even the one where it grabbed the pin doesn't look like it grabbed it very well. Looks like it had actually cooled off by the time it got there. So um, that old Radio Shack solder although it seemed decent to use doesn't look as good under the scope. And finally let's take a look at the Yuzu and uh, yeah you can see in the back there we've got some missing some depth there we've got some missing depth over here um but overall i mean mm, yeah I, it's not as good as the other one not as good a penetration as the kester it did go through and when it does it looks like bumpier i don't know if you can see that but it looks like the solder has cooled down too quickly to where it um does not look as smooth on the underside of the board so uh overall Again, uh, not being sponsored by Kester or anything like that, but I really do like that Kester uh, 3763, 6337 stuff that I got from Amazon. Um, and I think uh, beyond just the, the feel of it, I think it actually did a better job even considering my crappy soldering. So, hey, I hope you have a great day and thanks for watching.